There are plenty of hard things to do on the saxophone, right? Here's a list of hard yet useful and important things you're probably going to want to be able to do well on the saxophone at some point. Number one, play with a beautiful sound. Sound is really everything on the saxophone. There's that famous quote, the saxophone is really easy to play badly. Your tone is what's going to make or break you on the saxophone. I've made other videos going more in depth on this particular subject, but the gist of it is you need to practice daily for long periods of time, like years, in order to develop a good sound. And you need to spend a lot of time actively listening to great saxophone players in order to establish an intimate concept of what a beautiful saxophone sound actually is. Oh yeah, and long tones. Number two, play with good time. This one is just as important as sound, if not even more important and a little bit harder in my opinion. It's also notoriously overlooked since saxophone players aren't normally thinking of themselves as timekeepers in the same way that drummers, guitarists, and bass players are. Like sound, time feel is something you're gonna be working on forever since there's always room for improvement. Some of the best things you can do to improve your time feel include practicing with a metronome and their there are lots of different ways to do this. Also practicing along with great recordings of really tight bands. And my favorite hack for playing with better time is to think about the drummer. If you're playing with a drummer, you gotta make sure all the rhythms you're playing are locking in with what they're doing. That means you gotta keep your ears open. I know it may sound obvious, but this is something that rhythm section players are doing all the time and saxophone players, not so much. If you're playing and there isn't a drummer, Imagine one and play good time with your imaginary drummer friend. The big picture is we all have to hold ourselves accountable for the rhythm and not just when we're practicing along with the metronome. Number three, playing relaxed. Playing musical instruments makes us all tense up a bit. Saxophone players typically have tension in their neck, in their shoulders, in hands, and in the jaw. This tension wreaks havoc with the first two things on our list, sound and time. The best way to get into the habit of playing without tension is to practice in front of a mirror and actively think about playing in the most relaxed way possible. Biting down too hard on the mouthpiece because of too much tension in your jaw and hunching up your shoulders because of neck and shoulder tension are very common for saxophone players and those things can take quite a while to correct. When performing, it's almost inevitable that the tension in our bodies is going to increase. So the more we can get into the habit of practicing very relaxed, the better. Number four is playing in tune. Now this one shouldn't be so hard, but it's actually a challenge for everybody. The most obvious reason for this is the instrument design itself. The saxophone has a very wide range of expressive capabilities. One trade-off for all that sonic flexibility is the amount of control necessary. The saxophone is also an imperfect instrument when it comes to intonation. There are a lot of acoustic compromises that have to be made for this instrument to work the way it does. One of the consequences of these compromises is, let's say, tuning variances. The most in-tune playing saxophone instrument still requires the player to make significant adjustments in order to play really well in tune. I've made a video about how I practice this, but what I find really helps a lot is to practice a lot with pitch references. That could be drone tones or just recordings. We need to develop the ability to instantly react to the other sounds and pitches in our environment and make proper adjustments. Now, in order to do that, you gotta have a lot of embouchure strength so you can get the control here. And the only way to get that is with a lot of daily practice. Number five is improvising over chord changes. I think saxophonists have a more difficult path towards improvisation, mainly because as single note playing instruments, we're not required to think about the harmony in the same way as piano players and guitar players and bass players do. Bass players are only playing one note at a time most of the time as well, but 
they are always laying down the harmony. While there are endless resources for studying and practicing improvisation, the thing that saxophone players usually need the most help with is increasing their harmonic knowledge. Being able to play a bunch of patterns and licks doesn't get you very far if you don't understand the context. So one of the best things saxophone players can do to improve their ability to improvise well over chord changes is to learn how to play the piano at a basic level. Just learning how to comp chord changes over jazz standards or any kind of songs really is going to make an enormous difference in your quest to becoming a stronger improviser. Number six is making money. Everything so far in this list are things that require an enormous amount of time, dedication, and passion in order to pull off. Normally in life, when we apply those things in large quantities to an activity, there's gonna be some sort of financial remuneration on the other side. However, unfortunately, with music and a lot of the arts, the money can be elusive, to say the least. The fact is, musicians are rarely rewarded solely based on their musical abilities. Financially successful musicians are typically skilled in a number of domains simultaneously. This is the case now more than ever, so if you're a young musician starting out on the path to become a professional musician, I suggest you start working on some of the things I'm about to tell you, which could make the difference between having a successful career and having to give up. The first one is networking. As musicians, we need each other, and the size and scope of your network is gonna determine the kind of jobs you can get. There are a lot of really good musicians to choose from when a gig comes around. And the people that get called for those gigs, more often than not, over a consistent period of time, are the ones who are more likable. Big picture here, don't be a dick. The next one is presentation. You wanna look good, smell good, smile at people, say hello and goodbye to everybody at rehearsals and gigs, and give genuine compliments and support often. The musicians who do those things get more gigs and earn more money than better playing musicians who don't. Those are just facts. Be humble. Not every gig is gonna be at Carnegie Hall. You gotta take gigs that pay well sometimes and swallow your pride. On the other hand, don't let anybody take advantage of you. Providing musical services for below market rates isn't helping anybody. And you gotta play your butt off. Being everybody's friend isn't enough. You really gotta play well to don't be that person who gets all the gigs in town and then just stops practicing. Notice I didn't include things like slap tonguing or circular breathing or altissimo in this list. The first two, I never actually learned how to do and never felt the need for. However, altissimo, that's hard and really useful. So I want you to watch this video next for my tips on Altissimo.